it's been, I think, over 10 years this project has been going on. And the, it, it started together with the forest bird project as one, one project, and then we split because the seabirds and the forest birds are actually two different, uh, two different entities. You know, it's, it's a totally different environment where you're studying both of them. And so they split, we split off and then we've started monitoring the seabirds on the island and looking for where their, their burrows are because they, for a while, they didn't even know there was any more on the island, that they're way up in the mountains. And so it, it's hard to get to some of the places that we go. A lot of time, most of the time we get flown in by helicopter and dropped off on on small, narrow, steep ridges, and that's where these birds primarily find, find their home. So I'm a technician for Save Our Shear Waters, and before we assess them before we release them. So we just check their weight, um, we take some morphometric measurements that can be used for you know, scientific studies later on with bill depth and width and their shape of their head. Um, and then we also feel their pectoral area to see what their body condition is, to, to see if they're safe and able to fly. And if not, then we'll bring them back in for rehabilitation where they'll get fed and um, fluid therapy before they're deemed ready to release into the wild. The birds that we found to release are birds that are actually chicks in the mountain that have uh, been raised up uh, by, the, by their parents since it, it's in early in the early in the year, so in, in May they they lay an egg, and then they raise that chick, and then that chick develops and becomes older, and ready to fly out to sea. And when it takes off for its first flight, it actually has is attracted to lights. So when there's lights on the islands, it sees lights and it, it confuses them a little, and so they circle the lights until they get kind of exhausted and then they what we call crash and so they land in these places down around towns in developed areas where there are a lot of cats and a lot of other predators and that's where we try to have a lot of the community keep watch and take care of these and find find these birds and then release and they bring them to the Humane Society, the Save Our Shearwater Program, or they br bring them to the fire stations where there's uh, little uh, containers where they can put the birds in that they have found released uh, or where they found uh, crashed out uh, or as fallout birds. And so those birds we then check over, make sure they are fine, and we go over what. Uh, it, uh, as if they will be able to fly and then we'll bring them out to here and today what we were doing is a program with fourth grade classes uh, on, on the island here today we were with LALA school uh, elementary school and we are showing kids the birds and and the importance of trying to protect these birds on their island that is pretty much the only home that these birds have and so we bring them here for a release and uh, allow the kids to witness, witness the, uh, the release of a bird that will now spend the next couple of years of its life out at sea before making its way back here to Kauai. know anything about the birds so to have that information about it and realize the importance of the birds living here on Kauai and being part of this island with us um, that was really important they were excited I think it helped to learn about you know the, the background of the birds and why we need to protect them they're a lot more aware of it and looking around for it and what to do if they find one so that's yeah it was really important the Newell Shearwater is definitely a very endangered species. Its, dro its numbers are dropping dramatically, and that has come from a whole slew of issues out uh, uh, on the islands. Uh, uh, what we're here today for is the light 
pollution that they're attracted to. And so if we don't get to them in time uh, and to, to release them, then they will you know, potentially be attacked by cats or dogs or run over by cars out on the roads. It's, uh, or just never seen again out in the, in the, bu in the bushes because they're not, it's not windy enough for them to take off from a, from a spot. But then there's also the uh, uh, other parts with like power lines going across valleys that birds are colliding with power lines. There's the cats and, and pigs that are, are finding uh, the birds very tasty. And so they have all these predators that are eating them and destroying burrows. And so the numbers are dropping pretty dramatically and we're trying to keep refuge for for a lot of them uh, that are out there.